Hey there, welcome to this episode. We're going to be doing a practical demonstration of timing correction on the MPC. That way we can take a look at the relationship between the timing correction functions, the MIDI notes and the MIDI grid all at the same time. I think this will help you users out a lot because just looking at the settings and telling you how they're applied is one thing, but actually to see it as a practical demo will help you out further. So in order to do that, we've created a simple drum loop, 80 BPM, and it's two bars long. I applied some timing correction to begin, and what I've done is I've snapped everything to one sixteenth note, so nice and rigid and tight on the grid. And then with the swing amount, it's quite confusing because swing starts at 50. It doesn't start at zero, but it goes from 50 to 75. So at 50, we have no swing applied. So it's nice and rigid. Let's take a quick listen to the loop. It sounds okay, but with a little bit of swing, we could really add some kind of groove and life to that. I want to show you the difference as we start messing around with timing correction though. So let's go over to our grid view, go to menu and then choose the grid option. There's already a video on the grid view if you want to check that out, but let's zoom right in. Now, currently I've got my hi-hat selected because obviously I've been pressing that pad. If I deselect, I can deselect everything. You'll notice all of these MIDI notes are snapped tight to 116. That's exactly what we told it to do. So that's what we expect to see. But I want to show you before and then after, after we make some changes. So let's go back to main and go to time and correction. Now, in the other episode, I showed you that you could apply your swing amount before you start recording if you like. But sometimes maybe you just want to experiment. We wanted no swing and now we want to apply some. We don't want to have to come back and re-record the loop. All we need to do is go to timing correction because of course it corrects things. So if we choose swing, let's say that's what we want to do for the first thing. I want to actually apply, I don't know, let's crank it right up to 75 just so that you get the idea of what it's doing. And I don't want to apply it to all tracks, only the track that I'm working on. I want it to all events, so all notes, and we're going to say do it. Now when we take a listen, hopefully we'll hear that swing to our drums. Yeah, it's much better, adds a little bit of life, adds some swing, obviously. So let's take a look at what that's done to the grid view. If we zoom right in again on these notes, we should see some changes. Now you can see them here, certainly with the kick drums, it started to move that kick drum and push it out of the way. So you can see that correction, the timing correction in real time, it's moving. Generally the kick drums by the looks of things, it's not moving too much else, but it is moving those kick drums. If we zoom back out, Let's make another change so that you can see how that works. If you want to select a bunch of different sounds, you can do shift and select all. But let's say I just want the hi-hats. I can just press the hi-hat pad and select the hi-hats. Currently, if we zoom back in again, you'll notice they are still just snapped to the 1 16th on the grid. I want to make some changes there and I want you to be able to see that. So let's go back. We're going to go to timing correction. And this time what we're going to do, you'll notice it's already moved from all notes to selected because we've selected something. If you need to, though, you can manually change that. And I want to do a shift of the timing. I have talked about this in the first episode for timing correction, but it allows me to move notes before and after the grid. So we'll do a demonstration of both. Let's move them, say, eight before the grid. I just want to apply to just the selected, just the hi-hats and say do it. And now let's go back to our MIDI grid and take a look what it's done here. And it should have moved those notes a small amount before the grid. Actually, eight is quite a decent amount, but it does go up to like 40, so you can really move those notes around. But it's moved those notes before the grid. So now when we listen to it, those hi-hats are gonna be quite eager. They're gonna kick in quite quickly. Might be something that you want, maybe not so much. It's a pretty full on effect but I just want to show you that in real time. Let's now move them after the grid instead. So what we'll do is we'll go back to main, back to our timing correction and just change this. Let's move them say eight, or let's do five behind the grid this time and say, do it. And you can hear that, you can feel it too. It's like the laziness of the hi-hats because we've put them behind the grid. Let's take a look at the grid view one more time and it should be what we expect. We're gonna see our little hi-hats here and how it shifted them a amount after the grid or an amount. So there we go. That's the timing correction as a practical demonstration. Hopefully 
that gives you a better insight as to how that relationship works between your MIDI notes on your MIDI grid and the timing correction function. It is a really useful feature because it does allow you to add groove and swing in. Obviously, you can correct notes, you can move things around as you see fit, and you can apply swing even after the fact. Don't forget, of course, all of those settings can be applied before you even start recording, but it's great that you can come in and change them after you've recorded something. See you guys in the next episode.